This video is a response to my problem that I had about shockwave files rendering onto objects in UDK so that you could actually interact with them. Could not get the mouse to register properly onto the object, which is still something that's curious. But here's a um, video of me showing that problem very quickly. Um, you can see there's a trigger in the scene, you run up to it and it opens a graphics movie, it opens a dummy movie to show a cursor um, or at least to allow the cursor to move around and there's a toggle cinematic mode so you can't move and here it goes and you can see that although the slider shows up on the object it's transparent behind it but um, you can't actually uh, wiggle the mouse and as you hit a certain spot, sweet spot on the screen and then it works just fine as you'd intend it to and here's another example using the scene we're going to use now which is uh, you want to click on this um, button here, but actually it doesn't work unless you click over here, which is just really silly. Basically, I had to find another way to solve the problem. This is a UDN website, and they're showing a method to create a mouse interface. The idea is that the mouse interfaces with objects directly by getting their 3D coordinates in the scene. Or oh, it's complicated. You have to create a game class of your own or at least somehow incorporate this into your existing game class and uh, uh, the root of it is you set up a game info uh, which lets you say I'm going to use my HUD and I'm going to use my player controller and then the rest of it is setting up that HUD and that player controller. Now the HUD uh, part of it is so that the mouse will actually be driven uh, from code and you end up with something like this just a little default cursor which you can change out with your own graphic if you know where to change it and you can also make it use the scale for mouse from your flash file um, so this is what I did in the end and it works reasonably well the real way that this works is that you have to create a kismet action which lets you do stuff based on where the mouse is clicked Okay, um, this is done first off use by creating a thing in uh, Unreal Script called Interface, which is kind of like a set of functions that other classes can call on. Uh, again, it's kind of complicated and a bit above my head right now, but it's all provided here for you, and in this case, you don't have to do a lot of work. Just set it all up according to the, the, the file headings that they give, you know. You create all these um, files and compile them, and away you go. You also need uh, the sequence event in Kismet that will do stuff when you press, when you mouse over, when you scroll and so forth. So basically it listens for these uh, actions. You, you basically associate the event that this creates with an object in the scene. So the object in the scene is provided for you as a k-actor example and it implements that mouse interface that was shown just now. And that's basically what we need to do. Once the code is all set up and compiled you'll get in your actor classes uh, part of Kismet, you'll get a mouse, uh, well I created that one, uh, you'll get a mouse interface character and then in Kismet you'll get a new event uh, input, mouse input, okay and then when you create the character in the scene, uh, let's just create one really fast, same thing again, uh, you just create one anyway, no it comes in as a blank um, add mouse interface here. It comes in as a blank, you can't actually see anything, right? But you associate it in its properties with an object from the content browser, so we'll just go find some static mesh. Uh, uh, anyone will do, I guess. Yeah, that'll do. I'm not really sure. I'll use this one. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, so you set that into the uh, properties of the object somewhere. Um, oh, that's the world properties. Sorry. Um, Nothing selected, so we have to go hunt for that little guy. Because it's not because uh, it's not visible, it's a little hard to find. Um, but you know, it starts with the name mouse. Um, so there we go. We found it. And go to close and properties. Here we go. So we'll just lock that. And then uh, somewhere in here, there's a static mesh input that we can play with. Mm -hmm. Static mesh component, static mesh is none because it's not defined in there. We have it there, and uh, we should now see it somewhere in there. 100. 
Oh, no, it's still not showing up. Alright, try a different static mesh then, I suppose it's the only option. And I'm not, I might have put that in the wrong place anyway. There we go, there's a big huge square there now. And that's the, that's the one that's used in the scene anyway. That's just a visual guide really to this object. So um, the ob once the object's there, you go to Kismet and you can assign it to the um, thing. Or you can just go new event using mouse and uh, mouse input. Not touch and not read about that, right? So mouse input gives you this guy. Right, so um, now you can see that when the left mouse button is um, pressed over this object, you'll get a ability to feed out to certain things, you know, just play sound or whatever. Um, I used a set material. So let's just load up the example. All right, um, here's the scene. You can see when we play it, there's uh, if we press X on the keyboard, we get a little sequence to show us what to press, and you can see that. Um, they work and you turn it off and turn the next one and you turn the next one and you click it again and you turn the next one and you finish yay and you can level up to the next one and it gets harder and so forth or you can quit and we're going to quit in the scene you see that when you click on these you see uh, it's not that one it's this one uh, see it says persistent level mouse interface actor and there's this one too and then there's another one here obviously in the final game all these would also be um, the same kind of object and they would be like wrong responses and you click them um, we can kind of show you the, the wrong response just by getting them in the wrong sequence. So that's the correct sequence. That's the, and then you click the, uh, uh, no, I click the wrong one so it goes red and then we start all over again. So that works and then that works and then that works. And I click the wrong one again, it's the wrong one so it starts all over. So it's the wrong one and uh, it's the wrong one. But, you know. Anyway, but uh, resets and then we go back to the right one, the right one, the right one, the right one. Yeah, so all of these should, in theory, be uh, also clickable, but just hasn't been set up. Let's have a look at the Kismet for this, which is probably the interesting part anyway. So, Kismet. There's a timer which is not um, in play, and there's camera movement so that if when you play the game, you can press the arrow keys and you go up and down. This is just to make the level more complicated, and if you press spacebar, it stops you and so forth, right? Um, so that's a sequence for that. This is done using little matinees and key button pressing. Okay, um, here's the starting con conditions for when the level loads, we turn off everything except for the first possible object that you can click on. And this would, in the final one, also include enabling all the wrong choices that you could click first. Okay, um, we also set an integer, uh, which is called pressed to zero. So that each time we click on the right one, it increments it. Uh, it comes happening later on. And every time you click on one of those um, blocks in the scene, it compares the integer and sees whether, oh, is this the one I'm, I want you to press right now, or is it the wrong one? And if it's the wrong one, it acts accordingly. When uh, this, uh, first of, when you finish the sequence, right at the end here, um, when you finish the sequence, there's a uh, the remote event. That it sends you back to the beginning and just turns all the, the buttons off, you know, just to, just in case. Now, um, if you uh, click on the button correctly, there's a switch here which just turns on a little loop with blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, um, flipping around. Um, and then when you uh, click it again, that loop gets closed. It's not a del it's got delayed sequence activate delays, whatever they're called. Um, set activate delays. Um, it doesn't have a delay node. It just uses a gate. Um, it's simpler. Um, anyway, that gets closed as soon as you uh, click the box again, and then we um, it's effectively you're enabling the next box. You can see that the next one gets turned on, so it's off at the beginning of the level. Um, so you can only click them in a certain order once you've done the correct sequence here. We also toggle cinematic mode. Uh, if you click the wrong button, um, it just freezes you for a moment, so you cannot input anything. Um, and it plays a sound to indicate you've got the wrong one. Right? And it sets material to be red, um, and then after a delay it sets it back to the default material and everything in the sequence gets reset to the beginning and we start all over, right? Um, so that happens on every single um, object that you click on. If you click on it in the wrong order, it shows red and there's a sound and it resets the sequence, right? So suppose you, suppose you set it in the right order, you click on it, it flashes, you click on it again, it enables the next one, and the same thing happens all over again. It compares as the 
integer being set. You know, each each time you get it correct, it sets the integer. And you see, every single one has this based on whether you've done it right. And then uh, the same blue white, blue white, blue white for that part and the red turn off again um, for if you get it wrong. Um, uh, in this particular example, you can press only the ones that are available, so there's only four that you can click. The sequence kind of repeats at the end there, and then moving along. At the very end of the sequence, uh, when you get all four buttons, we open up a GFX movie, which is a shockwave file, saying um, you've won, uh, do you want to quit, or do you want to play the next level? Uh, there is no next level, but it just loads example map or something like that at the moment. The next level will just be more sequences and more difficult and so on. In the shockwave file, there's two text field buttons, and they need to have their text supplied. So we have a GFX set variable, which gives us quit, and we get level up. And uh, when you click on those buttons as FS commands, um, I know it's not the best way to do it, but it's fine, it's easy. Um, FS command quit, and FS command to open a new map, uh, which in this case is just that one example map. When you press the quit button, it asks you, are you sure? If you've finished the level and you press quit, obviously it'll just quit, but if you press um, Q during the gameplay, it asks you, do you want to quit or not? Um, if you don't want to quit, it just keeps playing. If you do want to quit, then it will quit. Right? Uh, there's a console command there for it if you press yes. Right? So let's just show that. Um, you press Q and it asks you, do you want to quit? You can either type Y or you can type N. Let's just type N and it goes back and you press Q again and press uh, Y and it closes after one second. So we press play. This time it's do it by the button, so no and quit again and yes. You know. um, so there's a little one second delay at the end there. Right, so uh, you can either run it from the, the, the buttons or the key input. Right? Um, we have the same uh, issue with the text fields in the buttons, which is to go GFX set variable. We can see the um, the variable here from the action script, which is, you know, the, the button is called no button and it has a text field inside of it and we're changing the text and we're changing it to a string called no. And here's the yes button and it's got a text field of text and we're changing that to yes. And that's pretty much about it. So let's just play it one more time. Um, you press X to show the sequence. And you can click on there. You can't click on anything else yet. We can turn it off and click on the next one. Click on the next one and uh, click on the next one. Do you want to quit? Or level up or whatever. I'm done.